Yeah, so uh, hey everybody, uh, this was Pantheon when I joined it. Um, uh, that's cool. We have four founders. Uh, they started out building uh, Drupal sites for uh, for schools like UC Berkeley and um, sort of the initial uh, proof that you could run Drupal at scale for uh, The Economist and sort of big uh, first uh, generation Drupal sites. At that point, it was probably Drupal 6. And, um, and I worked at an agency in Chicago and uh, uh, after running a um, big multi-site for an agency, uh, I talked to them and they uh, said that they uh, were looking for help with support and um, they asked me to join and, and I did. And um, just a little trivia, if you look on the right there, that guy looking at his phone there is Kyle Matthews, who later went on to um, start Gatsby. He, he built our first dashboards. And, um, and there's a couple other, actually, yeah, several of those people are still at the company. So uh, they've, they've uh, found a, uh, it's, a, it's a good crowd of people and uh, they've managed to tolerate me. Uh, so I like it. And so, um, you know, early on and what we've learned as we kind of grew is that we would talk to people and uh, they, they would have a part, uh, like a column in a sheet uh, where they were filling in different um, options for Drupal hosting. And um, they would ask for features like um, RAM and, uh, you know, uh, uh, CPUs and that sort of thing. And uh, our platform doesn't really work like that. Like it's every site on our platform is kind of a distributed infrastructure. And there's like the Git stuff, like the version control is built in. And there's a bunch of other things that are, uh, in there, and um, we were having trouble sort of connecting with customers, um, and we started thinking about it. And um, you know, if you buy any book on sales, uh, one of the things that they talk about is like uh, moving off of this the solution and talk about the problems, which is basically you know uh, discovery, you know, and do ample discovery. And so we started talking to people. Uh, in IT teams and in marketing teams about what they're trying to do and uh, what the problem is and why they were trying to see coasting. And sometimes it was performance and, you know, sort of obvious, like kind of break fix things. But um, ultimately what we found is that a lot of them were trying to bring to reality uh, what they had in their heads and trying to keep up with like the changing sort of competitive landscape and keep up with, uh, with demands, uh, within the organization and also uh, to be able to come up with new ideas and turn them into reality. Um, and one of the things that we realized is that uh, one of the ways that we were helping these customers is that we had uh, this workflow that um, was essentially kind of a DevOps, you know, go to market that we had built of like, well, we're your DevOps team. Um, but like, marketers didn't so much care about DevOps. Um, but what they did care about is the fact that, like, not only could they not push changes and make things happen that they wanted to, like, they, they couldn't even get to that point because they were worried about downtime or, or bottlenecked by central IT and provisioning and things like that. And uh, we were kind of solving that for them, but we weren't explaining it very well. And we realized that, uh, part of what we had to do was not just sell hosting, but also pitch DevOps to non-technical stakeholders. Um, and uh, one of the things that we realized was a good way to explain it was in terms of agility, because like, you know, DevOps is, is you know, it's kind of a technical uh, promise that that's made if you do these things like you can have dependable software and get dependable results and um you know agility was a big part of that and going back to like the 12 factor app and things like that um you know and about pushing small changes and it was sort of part of our init initial kind of value proposition and what we wanted to bring to kind of the drupal world when we were building these initial sites as a before we became kind of a platform as a service and we're doing these, these consulting projects. But when we started talking about agility, even within the last three, you know, two, three years, like it really started connecting with the non-technical stakeholders in a way that we hadn't before when it was just kind of a technical art, uh, conversation. And um, 
uh, now like agility and marketing is sort of a big deal. And there's, you know, something like 65% of, of organizations um, are trying to become more agile and, and trying, you know, trying to take, you know, their, what they want, what they like about um, agile development and, and rather than, um, you know, build a website every two years and just start from scratch and build it over and over and, um, you know, think in terms of monoliths, uh, they wanted to be able to, to uh, push changes and that sort of thing and sort of iterate and A-B test and that kind of thing. And, um, you know, uh, overall, they were looking for productivity and um, talking about agility uh, made that kind of connection in a way that uh, just DevOps didn't. And, um, you know, so now, now when we talk to folks, you know, if it's a dev, it's a dev centric organization, we talk, um, in terms of features and things like that, but really we're trying to help people within these organizations align better on, um, the fundamentals of DevOps, uh, but sort of talk about it in a language that, that straddles kind of different departments and hopefully breaks down silos and, um, you know, helps, helps drive, uh, drive, uh, you know, turning, um, you know, your website into this iterating, evolving, living thing. Um, and one of the companies that we often cite is, uh, Tableau, uh, because they came to us, uh, as sort of these young punks a few years ago. Now they're all kind of like me, they're kind of middle-aged and getting crinkly, but, uh, they came up to us and they were like, we're trying to do all this stuff, but like our, <laughs> we keep taking down our website and like, it looks like you have the version control and that sort of stuff built in and the pull request workflow, it can work with our, up, you know, with our Git repos and things like that. Um, but we need like different things and, you know, we need more environments and that kind of thing. And, um, and we started looking at what they were doing and we re like these, these guys have like at any given point in time, like if you don't know Tableau, they're sort of this analytics and visualization um, uh, platform. And like at any given point, they're running like 7,000 different landing pages and different variations and A-B testing to kind of figure out what gets, you know, good results. And then they double down on that kind of thing. And uh, we, they found a home in our platform and we sort of found like, you know, the, the ideal, um, state for a lot of our existing customers. You know, I think when, when you talk to customers, you ask them about their present state and where do you want to be? But a lot of times, like where they want to be just isn't like, it's, it's not where they should be, you know, where they want to be is something like, well, we just want our site to not go down all the time, you know? And, you know, so what we've tried to say is like, yeah, well, that's like table stakes, of course, let's get you to like where the site is performing. Let's get you to where the site is, is up all the time, but let's move past that to like more of an ideal state where you can iterate, where you can try new things, where when there's an idea, you can spin it up. Like websites aren't meant to be this, you know, sort of um, delicate flower that gets re reconstituted every few years. You know, it should be something that's always kind of changing. And um, so we've sort of looked to these folks uh, and other companies like this on our platform to kind of drive that. And so we've, we've shown, we've sort of nailed down a few common goals, you know, like good, good clients are able to publish in real time. They're able to try and iterate design and tweak things. And um, they're able to make use of MarTech and AB testing and, or even just different messaging and simple things like that. And they're able to, like measure their website in a way that aligns with their corporate KPIs. So like they can follow, you know, like marketing attribution is a difficult thing, but you know, your website is kind of where you drive everybody. Like that's where you have to kind of send everybody. So like you should be able to get past the, the table stakes and get to where you can kind of measure uh, results and conversions or whatever's relevant. And so part of that is Drupal. Uh, you know, as a CMS, because it's awesome and it hooks into anything and, um, you know, it's, it's tested and there's the community and the, the modules and, and all the different things you can plug into it. Um, and so we, we, that's sort of been our core, uh, what we've built around and tried to support for, for years. 
Um, but then on top of that, uh, we've tried to enforce the like reliability table stakes with, um, you know, with our container-based platform and horizontal scaling and multi-zone failover and having, you know, if you're a global company, you can have your site in whatever region and, um, you know, you have support there when you need it and that sort of thing. Um, sort of the things that, that uh, you know, if you've used our platform, you're familiar with, but they sort of emerged from sort of being able to try and deliver this promise. Secondly, there should be like the workflows that enforce these guardrails on the system where, you know, your live site is locked down, changes are pushed through Git, and, um, you know, you can make changes safely without, you know, without, you know, without worrying that uh, a developer is, is doing stuff in production and, and things like that. So, you know, we've always had sort of an opinionated workflow about our platform and this sort of enforces that. And, um, you know, we work to train people on our platform. So then um, you're working, uh, you know what you're dealing with and, um, and the expectations are kind of set. And so like every site on our platform has dev test and live and uh, more that I'll show you in a second. Um, but, you know, it's, it's tailored for, for Drupal where there is, you know, there's stuff being stored in the database and you need to be able to sync and do that kind of stuff safely and securely. Um, and so we've built a platform where every site on the platform uh, has those things and uh, it's meant to be a very friendly developer experience. You know, from the beginning, Pantheon has always been free for developers. Like a developer or an agency should never have to pay for a site on the platform and should always be able to use it free. And that's one of the sort of the fundamental things that we've believed. And like over the years, we've added other features. We've added multi-dev, which allows for different feature branching and allows you to use those things for continuous integration and that sort of thing. Um, we've built everything into a dashboard because uh, like we believe that CLI is awesome. We offer command line, like we believe in it. But at the same time, there's non-technical stakeholders who want to use it. And there's also just the ability to be able to wrap your head around what your, you know, what your web um, uh, assets look like at any given point. We think that that's, that's important. Um, we've added several other features that I'll show you. Um, I have about four minutes, so I want to kind of blast through some of the stuff and uh, just get to the demo because that's like fun. And so, you know, G2 Crowd likes us. That's awesome. Um, we've added things like a global CDN, uh, which has significantly kind of improved just overall performance and helped drive down uh, time to first byte and other sorts of things that we think are important. And again, that's just like, again, it's kind of table stakes. It's there. You just turn it on and it should just work in most cases. Um, and then, yeah, so like there's some managed updates that are built in like if you can do it yourself, that's awesome. But as we've grown, we've added professional services to our list of things that we do. And so if there's migrations that need to be done or uh, things like that, we build that in. Um, so my, uh, my former team, uh, I've hired uh, five of those folks. And, um, and we're hiring, by the way, actually. Five of six of those are still with the company and they're all in different departments. Uh, one of the, um, really the best thing about the job is that I've, I've gotten to see these people grow and like Rachel started in our docs team there and now she's in professional services and uh, uh, up at the uh, top right is Alex who's uh, in Romania and he started as a, um, uh, what did he start as? He started as a support guy and now he's a uh, SRE uh, and uh, we've gotten to see, you know, sort of grow with these folks together. Uh, and we have a bunch of awesome customers. Uh, every Ivy League school uh, in the US is on our platform um, and a lot of other Nestle and some other customers. And uh, yeah, so we have stuff on the roadmap and, but I'd rather just show you the demo um, and show you what it looks like and uh, and then we can sort of talk about any questions. So um, this is my this is my fictitious company. Um, it's uh, Arcadius. It's named after uh, the uh, worst um, Byzantine Empire. He was a weak ruler. Um, I think about that during COVID. Like you know, you're an emperor, but you're the worst emperor. Like, is that a good thing or a bad thing? 
Um, so like uh, every site on the platform, like I mentioned, has dev test and live. You make your changes in the dev environment. You can push them up to test, see what those changes are. If you are happy with them, you push it to live. Uh, all that is built in when you spin up a site. Um, every site on our platform is container based. So you can go, there's no bifurcation in our platform. So you don't get to a point and you need to be migrated to another part of the platform. You can literally go from being the smallest site on our platform to the largest site on our platform uh, through a pressing a button. And every site on our platform is horizontally scalable. You can hook into, you know, the, it's all connected on the back end via um, private key uh, infrastructure to the database and to solar and any sort of uh, components that you use. Um, the uh, what I'm showing here is actually our new dashboard, uh, which is not uh, gen like you've if you've seen Pantheon, you've probably seen something more like this and more like this. Um, but we uh, currently behind a feature flag, we have a new dashboard that we're working on. And um, uh, you know your sites are in here. Uh, if uh, because we don't really uh, do multi-site, what we offer instead is a Git-based upstream workflow, where you can spin up sites based on your upstream. And so you could put those here, and when you push updates to your upstream, you could pull them down to the sites below. Uh, one of the things that's in um, about to be released is is called um, Autopilot, and Autopilot is a way to just make sure that updates are done on your site. And we uh, basically what it does is you have a site on the platform, you uh, go into Autopilot and you turn it on and you say that, uh, for example, I wanted to check core CMS, I wanted to check plugins, I wanted to check themes. If everything passes, push sites to the lot, push updates to the live environment, do this once a week, Take some, do some visual regression testing on these pages here. And as long as it's within a certain threshold, uh, that's considered pass or fail and don't do any updates on these modules. So you set that up and then you can run updates. And then what it does is weekly, it looks for updates to core uh, or contrib. It runs visual regression testing um, if those tests pass, then it pushes it up to, um, it pushes it either to the dev environment for you to wait, or uh, it can push it up to the live environment. So, uh, you know, if you have, um, if you have uh, sites where you have your own kind of automated testing and CICD, you can augment it with that, or you can not use it at all. But if you're an agency or something like that, and you're you know, you're supporting a bunch of sites and, you know, you have a small client who doesn't have the budget, but you want them to stay updated. Like this is one awesome way that we're making it super easy for you to be able to do that kind of thing. So, um, so yeah, I'm, I'm over for time, but, uh, that's kind of like an overview of, of what we're about. Like there's, you know, obviously a lot more that I can talk about, but, um, you know, like I said, it's always free to try, like anyone can spin up sites and, you only pay for a site when you take it live and uh, we have support that's always chat first. So you can always reach out and ask us questions or, um, you know, you can ping me directly. I'm on, I'm on this time zone. So I'm always around hanging out, looking to, to harass uh, customers and talk with them about stuff. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what I got. <laughs>